I have this amazing idea for a game. The main character is a rugged, flawed protagonist with an aggressive, cold personality. Despite their lack of paternal instincts, this character finds themselves responsible for the life of a child. The world of this game is a cruel one, an unforgiving place for children. But the child learns to protect both themselves and the man. They face unbelievable challenges together and save each other's lives on many occasions. Through these dark and traumatic experiences, they grow to respect each other, and eventually that respect turns into familial love. Some are men now. Like you? No. We are not men. We are more than that. The responsibility is far greater. And you must be better than me. Understand? Say it. You will be better. Sounds totally original, right? Okay, so video games aren't that original. They borrow ideas from each other all the time. And this doesn't bother me one bit. You see, I think of video games as a conversation. They are constantly shaping and influencing each other, and that's okay. This video will be the first part of my new series on trends in video games. Today I want to examine a theme that has spiked in popularity over the last decade. My goal is to better understand how this theme developed and why it works so well. That theme is fatherhood. <laughs> Thank you, mister. In 2007, a video game called Bioshock was released. This video game set many impressive expectations for other games to follow. In this game, monsters, called Big Daddies, watch over children, called Little Sisters, as they harvest a substance from dead bodies. These children are imprisoned by a kind of trance that forces them to follow the Big Daddies and collect the liquid from corpses. I don't want to spoil anything, but I will say that family is the largest theme in this game. The main character essentially has the option to rescue these little sisters from their violent Big Daddies and give them the chance to live a real childhood. This game also presented an interesting gameplay scenario that piqued the interest of gamers and developers alike. Near the end of the game, you have to protect a child from these splicers while she harvests Adam. It was a fascinating scenario, having a child by your side in combat, but there was one large problem. It was annoying as hell. Having to protect a child in combat is burdensome and nearly impossible, but if you could make that child a resource, if you could give that child useful abilities that they can use to aid you in combat, now that would be interesting. That way you can make the story of the game about an emotional family drama without sacrificing the gameplay. Video games brilliantly notice this. Soon we had games like The Walking Dead The Game and The Last of Us. Both of these games revolve around protecting a child character. However, the child is resourceful and clever. They aid you in combat or help to point out resources that you can use in the game. Before you knew it, we had several games that included two main characters, the father and the child. I'm sorry about your daughter, Joel, but I have lost people too. You have no idea what loss is. Everyone I have cared for has either died or left me. Everyone fucking except for you. So don't tell me that I would be safer with someone else because the truth is I would just be more scared. Any person that plays enough video games can tell you that story plays a big role in most games. Additionally, if you ask a gamer to describe their favorite video game story, they will most likely explain to you why that story was so important to them and how it impacted them on a personal, emotional level. 
Indeed, video games are often very emotional. How do they achieve this emotional intensity? Aristotle argued that the pleasure of art derives from its imitation of real life. Games, like art, imitate the real world. He said, first, the instinct of imitation is implanted in a man from childhood. One difference between him and other animals being that he is the most imitative of living creatures, and through imitation learns his earliest lessons. And no less universal is the pleasure felt in things imitated. Thus, the reason why men enjoy seeing a likeness is that in contemplating it, they find themselves learning or inferring and saying perhaps, ah, that is he. For if you happen not to have seen the original, the pleasure will be due not to the imitation as such, but to the execution, the coloring of some such other cause. In other words, the more closely a work of fiction imitates real life, the more emotional it becomes. Video games often achieve this emotional intensity by imitating real life relationships, even in unrealistic fantasy settings. Here are some examples of how video games use real life relationships to heighten the emotional realism of their stories. The Walking Dead the game is a beautiful example of real life situations giving a story emotional appeal. Despite it being a piece of apocalyptic fiction, the work is emotionally grounded in reality. Telltale's Walking Dead details the struggles of characters Lee Everett and Clementine. After a zombie apocalypse breaks out, Lee becomes a surrogate father to the young girl. The fantastical setting of a zombie apocalypse gives the characters a meaningful conflict to overcome. Yet what fuels the emotion of each episode is the pure humanity of the relationship between these two. Notice how impactful these scenes between Lee and Clementine are. Daddy said it's called a salt lick. Yeah, but don't lick it. It's gross. Did you lick it? I don't know. Likewise, I can't talk about apocalyptic realism without mentioning The Last of Us. This story is an examination of trauma, how it shapes the way you interact with others and form relationships. Even though no one watching this video has had their loved ones beaten to death by cordyceps and zombies, we can understand and relate to this game's themes of trauma and loss. Joel is a man that is closed off emotionally because he lost his daughter. As a result, when he is entrusted with protecting a young girl, he is at first distant and cold. We know that he responds this way because he is afraid of loving again. He's afraid of losing another child. When Joel finally warms up to Ellie and becomes a father to her, oh my god, the feels. He's me. <laughs> he tried to... Oh, baby girl. It's okay. It's okay. Oh. Oh. In God of War, Kratos, being a warrior his whole life, has no idea how to be a sensitive father figure. He doesn't have the knowledge of what a young child needs to feel accepted and supported, especially a young son that is gentle, scholarly, and sees the world in a wholly different way from him. Despite this, the game slowly reveals that Kratos, even though he has an odd way of showing it, loves his son deeply. These three examples all highlight that fatherhood can be a powerful emotional tool. It can allow a game to explore relatable, real-life struggles. Lee Everett and Joel highlight the effects of trauma on family relationships. Kratos and Atreus exemplify the pressure of living up to father's expectations. On the same note, The Witcher 3 decided to include one of the most beloved characters of the books, Ciri. In doing so, this game explored a new side of Geralt previously unseen in the first two games. This game gave me a lot of respect for Geralt's character because it showed that even a man that slays monsters for a living is not above giving his surrogate daughter a good snuggle. I believe fatherhood has become a large trend in games because it allows games to expand on the strong male characters we've grown to admire. 
It adds humanity to these characters and makes them wonderfully human, but it also gives us a situation players can emotionally draw their own experiences from. See, it's not just fantasy that makes a game special. It's not just about the graphics or the level design or the gameplay. Those things are important. But what often makes a game carry emotional weight, what transforms a game from a product to a piece of art, is how it imitates real life. But I know there are so many games out there that discuss fatherhood that I missed in this video. If you know of any other games you'd like for me to discuss, feel free to comment below. Also, special thanks to the Patreons for making this video possible, and stay tuned for my next video game themes video. I should go.